New details are emerging from the Upside Down about the monsters of Stranger Things Season 2. We're uncovering the truth on today's Nerdist News. We are still five months out from the return of Stranger Things, but impatient fans were treated to a small peek through the curiosity door this week with the release of Season 1 on DVD and Blu-ray. The show's creators and stars have been doing a ton of publicity to mark the occasion, including a big release party just last night, and naturally they've been taking the opportunity to tease us about Season 2, including dropping some hints about the new monsters that we'll see lurking out of the Upside Down. But in keeping with the spirit of the show, those teases were more than a little vague and mysterious, with some quotes from the cast directly contradicting others. For instance, in a recent interview with Variety, co-creator Ross Duffer said hiding the monsters can be more effective than seeing them, so restraint can be a good thing, suggesting the show might take a more restrained approach to their featured creatures next season. But at the release party, that exact same Duffer then said last season a lot of the horror was off-screen in the Upside Down. Down. That's not the case in season two. The horror is more up close and personal. So which is it, HR Duff and Stuff? Will next season of Stranger Things be monstrous or monsterless? Well, this seems like as good a time as any to go over every fact we know so far with a Stranger Things monster roundup. First up, let's talk about the Thessal Hydra. This multi-headed monster made an appearance at the end of Season 1 via the kids' D&D game, and since last season's Big Bad, the Demogorgon also first showed up this way, most people assumed they were teasing the Thessal Hydra for a starring role in Season 2. But have we actually seen the Thessal Hydra yet? When the Season 2 trailer dropped during this year's Super Bowl, it seemed like a pretty safe bet that this massive monster in the Red Mist might be it. The only problem Whatever this is, it really doesn't line up with how the Thessal Hydra appears in D&D. It's more of a spider creature than the Hydra-type creature that the name implies. Of course, the show isn't literally about monsters from the kids' fantasy games coming to life, but those fantasy games do play an important role in helping the kids understand and interact with the strange things happening around them. Ross Duffer underscored this in a recent interview where he said Dungeons and Dragons was such a big part of it last year, adding that the kids use these games to help inform themselves about what's going on in terms of the supernatural. So with that in mind, it seems unlikely that they would label this very un hydra like creature a Thessal Hydra. And in fact, it turns out that the cast had a very different, slightly more ominous codename for the creature on set, the Shadow Monster. Now if you go into the D&D manual, you'll see that the Thessal Hydra has no shadow powers, adding more and more validity to the theory that the big guy we saw in the trailer is something else entirely. So does that mean the Shadow Monster and the Thessal Hydra could both show up in Season 2? Well, according to producer Sean Levy, that could be the case. He said in a recent interview, we're no longer in the world of a single single Demogorgon threat. The threats are more varied and definitely darker and more menacing. But if that's the case, then why stop with just two monsters? What other otherworldly threats could be on the horizon for the Hawkins AV Club? Well, as we said, movies and games are huge inspirations, not just for the kids on the show, but the kids behind the camera as well. The Duffer brothers have already listed Ghostbusters as a major influence on Season 2, which you can already see in these images. And Nerdist's own Clark Wolf actually got some exclusive statements from the cast about other movies that will be inspiring the new season. But they told us to watch Gremlins for this season. Um, and so, yeah, I'd already seen it, but I rewatched it, and it's still great. We do get a little more Indiana Jones. Like, Hopper gets to at one point go full indie. So Hopper gets to go full indie, which sounds very cool, but since we don't think there are going to be any Nazi face-melting ghosts in season two of Stranger Things, we think Mike's Gremlins watching homework assignment is the important info here. We've known for a while that season two will feature a subplot where Dustin gets a cute little sidekick from the Upside Down that he dubs a polywog. But if Billy Peltzer's Mogwai adoption story taught us anything, it's that any creature that seems impossibly adorable at first is probably hiding a dark and dangerous side. And with more monsters on the way, we're guessing it won't be long before the polywog ends up chowing down on a midnight snack or whatever it is a polywog has to do to become a gremlin. But what do you guys think? Are the Thessal Hydra and the Shadow Monster two different things? Should Dustin check the adoption papers on his new pet? And most importantly, what does Hopper going full indie actually mean? Let's discuss. Did you all hear that Captain America has gone full on Hail Hydra? Well, if you want to know more, Dan's got an all new cave of the Dan's where he's breaking it down. Be sure to like and subscribe and keep checking Nerdist.com.